Hey guys, welcome to the Tom Reefer Studio. New viewers, this is a 20 gallon mixed reef cube. Up top, we have the five gallon nano LPS dominated. It could be a peninsula reef. In the back, we have the infamous six gallon tall, eight inches wide by 22 inches high. And over here, we have the 10 gallon peninsula reef. And this is a mixed reef. I've just added some aquapora in there and today I'm going to give you a comprehensive guide on how to keep your parameters on a nano reef. It's really important. I get a lot of questions in my Q&A so I'm going to answer them all today in a comprehensive guide for you. getting a ton of questions about how's it going guys I had this big long intro to, today's gonna be straightforward no nonsense just right to it and let me show you I got everything out here for you guys I got all the salifert tests I used I won't use ammonia get rid of that I have the calcium I have the nitrate I have the phosphate test and I have the DKH test. The reason why I thought about it was because I haven't tested any of my tanks in probably two months or so. So today I'm just gonna put it all together for you in a comprehensive guide. So if you're not sure about what you should do with parameters in your nano or a large reef tank for that matter, you just come to this video, you look for that section and you'll know what to do. All right, so let's get into it. Step number one, weekly water changes will keep your calcium and alkalinity higher and stable. It's just too hot to keep my yellow on today, guys. It's really hot in here. I got the fan going, it's too hot, so you don't have to deal with black. Test your water. Test nitrate, phosphate, calcium, and DKH. If you want to test magnesium, you can. Chances are, if you're changing water on a regular basis, or you're dosing two part, or you're dosing calcwasser, you're gonna have enough magnesium. But you could test magnesium if you want. The point is, is you don't wanna go crazy with stuff, that's all. So the first thing we're gonna test is the five gallon up top. I'm gonna to test nitrate phosphate, and maybe calcium on that one. Right, so here we go, nitrate, one mil of water. Clock, timer, three minutes start. It's not even pink in the slightest. The card is pink and I'm clear. Some may say you need a little more nitrate. Well, you know what, guys? All the power to you. If you want to spike your tank and add nitrate and run the risk of getting high nitrate, getting, you know, I don't know. I just never have done it that way. Did I say let's test phosphate? Let's test phosphate. The shirt back on. Five gallon nano, 0 0.07. Next one is calcium. I use salifert. I have the Hanna checker, but it's a little more involved. I'm just very comfortable with the salifert and the drip, drip, drip method. Calcium, two mils. This is tank water. Six, 470. And all I've done there was weekly water changes. As I think about all these steps here, there really isn't that many steps. 
this is where I'd go, right off the top of my head. Weekly water changes. You don't want to do weekly water changes. Fine, you got to test more. You got to see if once every two weeks is your calcium going to lower or is your DKH going to go down. So if that's the way you want to do it, then test more, do less water changes. But if you do less water changes, what's going to go up? Possibly your nitrate and phosphate. We're going to do alkalinity now. Check it out, 9.1 DKH. Water change, guys, is the number one tip for keeping your parameters stable. Step number three, add your bio load. So for example, you have to feel your way into your bio load. If you're starting a nano, I get a lot of questions of how many fish, how many corals, and all I can say is there's no set perfect limit. want to do is go slow so you have your live rock in there and you've cycled your tank and then what you would want to do is test your parameters after you have those numbers now you start adding coral if you'd like or maybe you add fish first because fish will give you more of a spike in your phosphate and nitrate corals aren't going to give you much of an adjustment other than your calcium and your DKH Or if you recognize any changes in the basic parameters, nitrate, phosphate, calcium, and alkalinity, then you will adjust. If you're doing 50% water changes on a nano reef, you will not have a nitrate problem at all. Phosphate is difficult because it's going in with your food. So that you have to draw a balance. So let's make that step number... I'm losing count now. I'll probably put the number up here. Be careful how much you feed. What I do is I like to feed the fish as much as they can eat so none of it is left floating around the tank. So what I do is I feed multiple times. I'll feed a little bit and they'll eat. And then again, once a day, sometimes less than once a day. Sometimes I'll skip a day. I've mentioned that before. Step number observation. Watch what your corals are doing. pH, guys, I haven't mentioned that at all. pH is a funny thing. If you have your tank in a basement and there's not a lot of airflow or windows, you're probably going to have a low pH. If you have it in an airy room and you have a low pH, that could be who knows what that could be? That means maybe not enough oxygen through your tank. Maybe you need a refugium. That's why I'm not adding that as one of your parameters to maintain a stable tank. All this made sense, guys. So that should do it. So take care. Have a great day. And I'll see you on Wednesday or Thursday. Take care now, guys.